The wings featured in this video will be my third pair of wings I have made entirely from scratch. So I have here a list of materials. You can go ahead and screenshot that. I'll also leave some links in the description below. First thing we're going to do is cut and mark the base. Now when I say mark the base, I just mean mark where you want the straps to be inserted into your wings. So that's going to be right about where your shoulders are, give or take. Two holes on each side. Measurements do not have to be perfect, just rough guesstimate. And then once you have those holes set for where the straps are going to be, you're going to start shaping your wings. You're going to cut out the shape in the top and the shape in the bottom where the wings are separated. I did use a measuring tape here just to make sure that the shoulder straps were a good width apart, but again, I have eyeballed it and it's not something that needs to be super precise. Once you're done inserting the straps, you're going to test it, try it on, make sure it fits, make sure it's comfortable, etc. anyway. I do also use adjustable straps for mine and I do recommend that. It makes the whole measuring process and just straps in general so much easier to deal with. And then we're going to move on to step two, which is adding the lower base or the lower part of the wings. After you've got the shape down of your first wing, you can go ahead and just lay that on top of cardboard for the second wing, trace it, and just copy exactly what you did that way. And this is what the base of your wings will look like. Now moving on to step three, attaching the upper and the lower base pieces. So once your glue gun is ready, you're just going to kind of almost stitch the lower and upper halves together. So you can see here, I'm kind of filling in the crease where the lower and the upper halves meet. Step four, we're going to paint the base. When painting the base of the wings, the idea is generally to get the base as close in color to the color of your feathers. Now, I was impatient and I did not have the right color on hand or the right colors to mix it. So I went ahead and chose the closest thing, which was not all that close. But in general, any solid semi-matching color is going to be better than leaving the cardboard blank. I would also recommend just using spray paint instead of doing this by hand with acrylic, but either way works. Spray paint's just a little bit faster. After that, this is not absolutely necessary, go ahead and seal your paint with any kind of paint sealer if you have it. If you don't, you can also use hairspray. Once your base is entirely painted, you're going to go ahead and attach the straps using those markings that you made earlier. In this step, we are going to make two evenly sized holes, fairly small, on each wing. These are going to be right on top of each other, about one finger length apart. After we have our holes cut out on each side of the wings, we're going to take each end of the clear bra strap elastic that we'll be using for our straps, the little metal piece, and we're going to carefully maneuver that through each hole so that they can be connected by the metal pieces once they are through the holes. Once you have your straps through, go ahead and do a test run. Move around a bit, put your arms out to the sides, up above your head, do a couple poses, make sure that your wings are nice and sturdy, the straps are comfortable, and nothing's falling apart. All right, you are already on to step seven, which is by far the most intensive part of the process. 
Using your high temp hot glue, you are going to attach the feathers to the cardboard base. Now make sure you pay attention to which side is the inside of the wings and which side is the outside. On the inside of the wings, we want our feathers to be facing down with the back side facing the cardboard and the inside of the feather facing us. On the outside, we want to do the opposite. This will give us a more realistic angel wing look. It will also really give your wings that floof and realism that you really want. Some of the feathers will need to be placed almost horizontally, kind of following the pattern of the shape of the wings towards the top, so that they lay more naturally on the frame. While you're working on the feathers, also pay attention to the sides of the wings. A lot of people forget this, and if you leave the sides completely bare, not covered by any feather, it's going to look really cheap and <laughs> not as full and beautiful as you want. As you can see, my creative team was oh so helpful throughout this entire process. As you're laying feathers, especially once you get kind of towards the end of the process, you will want to start trimming off the very end of some feathers so that the stem isn't poking out of your wings. You will also most likely be working with about two layers of feathers on each side to give it that nice, full, real, complete look. There's sort of a down layer on the very base of the wings, and then after that are the feathers that you see. And this video is sped up quite a bit. This was a multiple day project for me. These wings are very big and I did hand dye a lot of the feathers. Everything is shaped very carefully. Everything's from scratch. So it is a pretty intense project, especially if you're doing something like this ombre design. Now we can move on to an optional step, which is dyeing the feathers. <laughs> there are a couple ways you can do this. For a softer effect, you can use watercolor paints. For a harsher effect, which does have to be done very carefully or you can damage and even destroy the feathers, you can technically use acrylic paint, which I did on these wings. So I tried out all of these dyeing methods so you don't have to. <laughs> The Ritz synthetic dye, no matter how long I left the feathers in the dye, no matter what I did, it always turned the feathers kind of magenta instead of red, which was fine. It actually was a perfect mid color. But if you're looking for a more bold red color, I would suggest trying either the watercolor or acrylic paint method. Just be very careful with the acrylic. I did also test using Sharpie on the feathers. This does work but it is painfully time consuming if you're going to try to do it that way. It's very frustrating to try and color a whole feather with a Sharpie marker. And here we are. If this was helpful for you at all, please, please, please remember to like, comment, share, check out my other social media pages. Anything and everything you do to support me helps so much and I'm super grateful for you guys. Thank you. Hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you again soon.